Okay, very quickly, before this video starts, I just want to throw this on the front. Um, it's this is going to come, you know, sound like I'm bragging, but I'm really not. It's 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 important to me to to get this out before the video starts. Everything you're about to see, in fact, all of my builds, everything in my like Raspberry Pi playlist, I build using the cheapest materials possible, and that includes the tools as well. My builds have no 3D prints. They have no like special um <clears throat> engineering uh stuff in it whatever it's all what you can see here cheap tools from the pound shop like these knives are from the pound shop the files are from the pound shop this is from a, like a, a manicure kit or something like that um this little like tri blade i actually use this to drill um like small holes that you can make wider is actually super handy just a hand drill rather than like use an electric drill the only thing that i really plug in um, as far as tool goes is the soldering iron because I don't really fancy heating a paper clip over a you know Bic lighter but um, yeah I just want to point this out there all of what you're about to see is all made with hand tools from the pound shop and the reason I do that is because I'm you know I just want to point out that you can do this it doesn't cost me a lot of money to do you know what I do I build it out of scraps and cheap Chinese parts and all of my tools. I don't have a workshop. I'm literally in my office at work at my real job um, with just a handful of really cheap pound shop tools. So yeah, you can do it. Okay, good morning. Um, I'm gonna try and keep this as short and as sweet as possible because I've managed to do a lot to the build and I'm gonna try and fit it all in as quick and you know as I, succinctly as I can. Okay. What I'm going to do is basically break down what's changed since um, my last little update. So first things first, let's slide this out the way, pull this in. So, oh my goodness. So it looks like a mess. All of my builds look like an utter mess at the beginning, but they somehow just come together at the end. So as you can see, what I've done is I've uh, cut these two female micro USB um, sockets taken the wires out and soldered them directly to where the stacked type a usbs used to be over here i've desoldered it and then these are soldered directly onto the board the only reason this piece of tape is here is to stop them getting snagged and popping off because they can be quite sort of they're little delicate um uh solder points so i didn't want them to get them snagged as i'm sort of like jostling this plastic around and what with the knives and pliers and everything else um I'll ignore these wires for the minute. Uh, so that kind of snakes around and goes to the front. So what I did was I cut out the little nine pin um, stickers. Uh, there were two little stickers, one at the front that sort of emulated the little nine pin Mega Drive connectors. And then what I've done is I've just basically put them in there. They're not glued yet. I'm going to hot glue them in. And then I just shaved the back so they're nice and flush so you can actually just feel them there. Same for the back. What I've done is I've cut the... Uh, just the tiny little bit of plastic on the front of the 3.5mm uh, jack, cut that down so it's nice and flush, HDMI and the power there. I should put it, I could have put it over there where it was on the original Mega Drive but on the PlayStation Legacy that was such an absolute nightmare I decided not to and I'm just going to move the power and the USB over here because at the back no one sees. Okay, these wires on top. Um, I'll get to those in a minute, but what you really need to know is it's exactly the same as the PlayStation Legacy. So you're gonna have a drive light, which is here. Now this drive light, let's focus up. There you go. This drive light's a little bit different to a normal LED. What it is, it's one of those lighthouse LEDs. It comes up to about here. So that I cut about five or six mil of the plastic from the top. Just slice that, cut it off, fold it down so it's now nice and flush. Cause I only needed like, what's that, two mil? maybe maybe one and a half down here um uh, the height on this uh, little led bit here i have one of the world's smallest micro switches here and i'll show you why i mounted it in such a way all of this is temporary it's just prototyping so far um i'm cutting the holes i'm finding out where i need to cut and file and do whatnot so although these wires look ugly and they you know it's all temporary um, the last thing I've got, or one of the last things I've got, is this little roller micro switch. Again, focus up, there you go. Little roller micro switch. So when something rolls over, okay, you can see probably where I'm going with that. All right, 
Why I've picked these specific switches and put them in this specific order is because of the lid. So we'll move from the back to the lid. Okay, um, first thing you'll see is this ribbon cable. So why have I got a ribbon cable from the lid? Well, ta -da! this used to have a piece of plastic in there. I've cut all of the plastic on the inside out, so now it's hollow, and the cartridge itself will sit over this little SD card. So it goes in, in exactly the same way as the memory card on the PlayStation Legacy here. When you pull that out, if you try really gently, there you go. When you pull this little, I mean, this is just a piece of perspex. But when you pull that out, there's the memory card and you can pop it in and out there exactly the same way here. So when you pop that cartridge off, there's the memory card. Um, with that, what I did was, there was this elaborate sort of spring-loaded trapdoor, just like on the original Mega Drive, there was like a spring-loaded thing here. And what I've done is I've used the mounting post for that, took it off, and just put on this, it's just cardboard, really. Cut a slot into it, so that when, again, this is in the prototyping stage, but when it's fixed, it'll be nice and rigid, and then you just put the cartridge over it. And as you can see, it kind of pokes up just enough. There you go, just in, oh, no just enough so you can get the cartridge over it and then the cartridge will sit nicely on top. Let's do it one more time. There, I would like it to go down a little bit further but I'm not gonna have enough room with the heat sink and everything else here. So that's what's under there, that's why it's got that ribbon, that ribbon then goes down to the underside here, which is why this isn't stuck down yet. Um, all I've done to mount this so far is I've cut a Bic pen, you can probably tell, where is it, yeah, Look, I cut a Bic pen and um, use the actual pen itself, super glued that to the inside. So I've made these little plastic mounting posts. The reason I use this plastic stuff is I didn't want to drill anything in the bottom that would be permanent. With these, if I put it in the wrong place or if I decide I need it up or up, I can just snap them off. So that's why. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So everything up to this point has actually been really simple. The hard bit is this bit here. The first thing we're gonna to have to do is this reset button here isn't actually a reset button. What I'm gonna do is just cut that out and then I'm gonna get a, um, I think they're called Stadler pencil erasers, like the white ones you used to get in school. And I'm gonna cut that into that shape. And then I'm gonna cut a small letterbox into the inside. So you'll see, it will look exactly the same as that. I'll even put the dimples on it and everything, but it'll actually be a rubber button. When you press it, it will compress down onto this switch here, this tiny little micro switch, again, temporary. And then that will essentially be the open button here, which was the customizable function button that I put on this one so that it will just take you back to emulation station. But for, I mean, the sake of this one, when you click down on here, click, well, it won't click. Well, it will, it'll be kind of a click, but it'll be rubbery on top. And you press down on that, it will take you back to emulation station. Really simple. For the on off power button, if you look on the underneath, you can see it's that little nodule here. So what I didn't want to do was put in two switches, click on, click off, because the way the, um, the, way the Raspberry Pi works is that it's a momentary switch. So it's just connecting a circuit and when it sees that, um, it can't be like a, a permanent switch like a, you would have for a light or something where it's like on or off. It's always on off, on off, on off. So because of that, I've got one of these roller ones. So that little nodule, when it rolls, if I mount this in such a way, when that little nodule rolls over, it'll go click on, click off, click on, click off. So even though it says on and off, it doesn't really matter. It'll be click, 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 click. And so there you have your on and off. It, all it does is it runs a little script. All that does is it runs a script, which is a safe shutdown script. That's all it does. So I'm gonna mount that essentially under that little nodule, well, you can't really see it, but if I mount that under that nodule there, I might, because it's got this little slit cut into it, I might put it a little bit lower and then in that slit I'll make, um, again, probably a cardboard, just like a nice semicircle. So it's a nice smooth click on, click off. I don't know, I'll, I'll muck around with it again, all in the prototype stage. And then this slider here, which used to be for the volume, what I thought I might do is if I add, say, a piece of plastic 
on there, I now have a really large sliding switch. So I thought at the back here, I might add, uh, where did I leave it? It's over here. I might add this, which is just another, this is actually an on and off switch. So it's a two stage switch. So you click on, and, well, that's on, that's off, on, off, on, off. And if I put that back here, say, or mount that back there, I can use it to, with that sliding in and out, there you go, so it will slide on, click on, and then click off. When that um, activates, I can put that uh, little fan. If I've got room, I can put a fan in there, just the same way as I'm behind this reset button, you'll hear on and off. There's a fan built into that. So I might do the same thing on here, but as far as where to put the holes, I'm thinking along here, even though this isn't actually a vent, I might just vent something out the side here because it will look less obvious. And then lastly, and this is the one that I, I'm sort of super excited about, I thought what I might do is put one last switch. So we've got the reset switch, we've got the on and off switch, we've got a two stage switch here, but I was thinking why not put another switch here with another function button on it. But I'm not quite sure what I would do with that yet. And then I thought, well, the original Mega Drive had an out uh, uh, 3.5 mil jack here, which is in the seam of the thing, but you can just kind of see it's a little bit silver there. I thought, why not put a headphone socket in? So I might put a headphone socket in there and another micro switch on this side, so that when you slide it back like that, it will turn on the fan. And when you slide it down, maybe it can run a script so the sound comes out and stops coming out the HDMI and starts going out the 3.5 uh, mil jack that I can just solder up and then solder that to the analog thing. Or maybe a mute button. So when you click it down, it just mutes. I'm not quite sure yet. And very, very lastly, I actually drilled, you'll see it from this side, a little hole back there. So that hole fits this. LED. So the LED just sits nicely, if I can find it, looking through this viewfinder, nicely in that lens and sits there. So now you've got a nice flush, which is why I needed to shave it down and file it and, you know, whatnot. Uh, a nice flush uh, LED. I might have to put a resistor on it. It is very, very bright. But what that does is that flashes every single time um, something accesses the SD card, this LED will flash. Just so you know, you know, that it's doing something, or when you saved, or when you're loading, it'll do that. Overly, it's going really well. Um, like I say, I've got to cut that button out and then make a rubber button there, but overly, I'm pretty impressed with how it's gone. Now, because all of these um, LEDs and the startup and shutdown script and the power button and everything else, because all of these are in exactly the same place on this Raspberry Pi, as they are on here, there's nothing stopping me taking that memory card out, putting it in there, and uh, turning it on, and all of these like wires and whatnot should come to life. So what I'm gonna do is I'm quickly gonna pause this video here, run into the uh, computer in the other room, whack it all on, swap over the memory card. So even though I have done a little bit of um, uh, work on this image here, the software is always what I do last. Basically, all it's got is a splash screen, which I made super quick yesterday, a Sega splash screen. Um, and it's got all the ROMs on there, but it's got no box art. It's got no, you know, screensaver. It's got no loading screen stuff yet. I always do that last because it takes forever. Even though that's on there, I might just put the PlayStation memory card, uh, SD card in it now just so I can show you like the lights working and the on and off and you can kind of get a fair idea of how it's going. Once I get home, because I'm at work at the minute, once I get home, I'm gonna whack out the glue gun, like the hot glue, hot glue that in, hot glue that in, and start trimming these wires and uh, soldering up some new lights and whatnot. What I'd like to do is have all of these electronics attached to here rather than mounted down here, because then this will be like a two part um, machine. So if anything goes wrong or I want to change anything or something shorts, what I can do is just unplug from the board and then lift the whole top off and all that will be down here are these two wires because they're going to be hot glued in 
uh, with, uh, sorry, these two ports down here and the board. That will be it. Everything else will be able to come off nice and clean. And then once, um, uh, once I want to put it back on, just plug, 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 back it goes. All right, anyway, I'm going to go to the other computer, hook it up and see, uh, um, well, not see, basically just quickly show you how it all works. Okay, um, pardon the noise, we've got some fridges over there with huge compressors on and they just make a hell of a racket. Um, but very, very briefly, we're in, we've got power. Um, this is the Sega um, SD card that I'm working on at the minute. In it at the minute is the, there they go, now they're off. Um, in it at the minute is the PlayStation Legacy SD card, which I've just quickly popped out and it is now snugly tucked underneath the Sega cartridge. So that's on top. Uh, the SD car, uh, the SD drive light is here, just snugly flush. I mean, it'll be better once I'm gonna tidy up a little bit and then put some hot glue in there so it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is simulate rolling the um, button or the, the thing here over this switch. So I'm just gonna click it and then you should see it. Oh, let's turn the light off. Should see it come on. There you go. Like I said, it's very bright. I might whack a resistor in there just to knock it down a little bit. Although it doesn't look that bad. I mean, if you cover up all of that, yeah, yeah, it's not that bad. So, like I said, it's the that's very loud. It's the PlayStation Legacy at the minute. It's going to go straight into that. And um, yeah, it's not doing its thing. So every time you access uh, the SD or Flash. And obviously the the little all the little roller thing did there was just start a little startup script. Let's get into a game. Just the first one in the um or should we? Yeah, why not? Let's just get into a game and then I'll quickly show you the other ones. What's this? 007 racing. So doing its thing, I mean the 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 machine itself, once it's finished, will have only Sega stuff on there. But again, this is just for prototyping and testing purposes. So you can see, look, we're in 007 Racing. So now what I'll do is I'll simulate pressing this rubber button here. So when you push it down, it will compress on a little pencil eraser, and that little pencil eraser will have this mounted in it. So I'm just gonna squeeze it, look at the screen, and back to emulation station. So all I did was just click. So that'll be what happens when you press that button, which I'm just about to cut out now. So let's uh, simulate rolling this back over this rolling switch. So you're just gonna go click and shut down. So all it does is just runs a little safe um, start up and shut down script. It's nothing incredible, it's like fairly standard stuff. Um, what I might do is just show you what I've got to work with so far on this. It's very basic, the image that I'm working with, but um, I'm quite pleased with what I've managed to do so far. So obviously when I swap this card over, you're not gonna have the flashing drive light. None of these are gonna work because I haven't done the code yet. Um, that's, again, one of the last things I do. But you'll be able to see very, very, very bare bones image of what I've managed to get running so far. Okay, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, before I show you um, the image, I just quickly wanna go over the controllers. Now, um, Again, trying to keep this video as short as possible. The PlayStation Legacy, when I built it, this is an original uh, DualShock 1. It's over 20 years old at this point. Um, and it was for the, uh, uh, if you've never seen an original PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 controller, it's got like a nine pin, um, quite wide plug at the end. And what I did was I bought like a little two or three pound Chinese converter cable, but I didn't want to plug the PlayStation into that converter cable and then plug that converter cable into the front of the PlayStation Legacy because it would look ugly. So what I did was I actually took the PCB of the converter cable out, put it inside the controller, soldered the controller to the PCB and then the PCB sold a USB out from the original um, PlayStation Classic controller so it looked like that. So that is now much cleaner and much nicer. Um, with the PlayStation retro bit, whatever it is, the little tiny little uh, case that I bought, it had little stickers where it would nine pin adapter would be. Couldn't put a full size USB in there because they're too small. 
I couldn't put two in there. I could put one in there, but again, that would look ugly. So what I did was I had these USB knockoff Sega Saturn pads, which I really, really love. I love the Sega Saturn pads. They're not great, you know, build quality and whatnot. I am actually going to get, because I've also got a couple of six button Mega Drive pads as well. I'm actually going to get one of the USB retro bit eight button Mega Drive pads, which is looks exactly the same as an old school Mega Drive pad, except it's got two shoulder buttons. They're about £17, I think. Anyway, what I wanted to do was I couldn't have full-size USB, even though this was. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll just get a little USB cord, like a braided cord, and then chop the end off, and then solder the end of the braided cord to the PCB inside the controller. Simple. Took like five minutes. What, what I did, though, was that I just ordered on eBay the first... Uh, USB cable that I came across, like the first listing I came across. So unlike most people that go, oh yeah, I'm just getting, you know, like a, a one meter cable, that'd be fine. What I did was bought a three meter cable and when I saw it, it was so funny and it was so stupid that I thought, why not just use the whole cable? So what, what I've got is a three meter <laughs> USB cable. Look at the state of it. But it goes to micro USB so I can use two of them. And I thought, well, if I've got two of them and two of these Sega Saturn pads, because when I bought one originally, they sent two in the post and I never told them. So I always had a spare. I've got two of these. So I thought, why not just do both? And you can see, look, here it is. Here is it on the floor in my office. And keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Here's the controller. Look how stupid this is. You can play it in another room. That's how stupid this is. Anyway. What I'm going to do now is quickly fire on this machine uh, with these new controllers and I'll just show you just the basic image I've got right at the minute. Okay, here we go. This is just the little startup screen and it's going to have a quick little splash screen that I made. Sega. It's got a little bit of static on there, a little bit of distortion like you would find on an old thing. The name, the Mega Pive. Um, me and my son were basically thinking of the way I build all my Raspberry Pis is what's the dumbest name I can come up with and then that's what I call it and the Mega Pive is definitely one I always try and sort of think of a stupid name the what did I have I had the Mega no I had the Flux Capacitor which was a Flux Capacitor the Police Box which was a Police Box from Doctor Who um, what else did I have uh, the Key Lime Pi because it was on a key ring um, and basically stupid names. So yeah, the uh, the Mega Pive. I'm thinking it's a good job I didn't build it on the Genesis because that would be the Genopis, which no one really wants. Okay, so basically, I uh, someone made this pretty awesome theme, and I liked it a lot. So I made the splash screen myself, threw that on the front, and now we have just these uh, just these consoles on it in a minute. Like I say, it's going to be all Sega all the time. So obviously we've got the Mega Drive, we've got, uh, that's the British Pie menu, we've got the 32X, we've got the Sega CD which has also got Sega 32X games on there as well, uh, the SG-1000 and the Game Gear, oh and also the Master System. So it's going to have all those consoles on there, they're all up, they're all running, they all look pretty nice if I'm honest. It needs a lot of work, it's going to need a lot of massaging and obviously when you start a game it doesn't have, um, let's just pick any game. Uh, what do we want to play? I think maybe the best test for the uh, Sega Mega Drive is uh, maybe the game that's on the front. Sonic the Hedgehog? The original Sonic the Hedgehog? There you go. And obviously we've all got our, you know, fast forward, rewind, uh, all built into the controller, so you can fast forward, you can rewind, you've got save states, you've got mute, you can turn the volume up and down, all this via the controller, but also I can set it up as a, you know, a button on the thing as well, so that's what I thought. So I thought when you, uh, if you're playing the game and you've got the headphone jack plugged in, if I can fit the headphone jack in, then you would just press one button and it would mute. And I think that's what I might do for the front of the um, 
the little slider on the bottom underneath the thing, so you can just press that. So yeah, that's basically where I am at the minute. Obviously, none of the uh, the buttons work. The, you know, none of the the drive light doesn't work, but it all will because I'm basically going to be putting in the same code as the uh, PlayStation Legacy. But yeah, that's pretty much where I am at the moment. Um, hopefully, next time it'll all be either put together or at least a little bit closer to being finally screwed together and and shut up and all looking nice. All right, cool. Peace.